This is Hilo. How's everyone doing? My name is Salto Garcia, and I'm just giving you like a report, a summary of the week, in a way, in a nutshell, regarding labor. I ask myself, why have unions shrunk to 6% of the workforce, even though the Bureau of Labor Statistics says it's 11.5% of the workforce, but they include also those governed by collective bargaining agreements, even though they're not part of a union. In other words, contractors. So just counting union members is actually 6%. Okay. It's sad to see that Starbucks workers, Amazon workers, have not been able to unionize. They've been stopped at every moment. The companies are spending as much money as possible to just stop the unions from coming into the workplace. And in uh, Starbucks, they fired thousands of employees and stop any unionization efforts across the country. Uh, and another issue was the uh, assassination of the Ecuadorian candidate for president. He was writing for about 11 years, doing investigative journalism, doing lives pointing out of the fraud, corruption in the government, and he was running for president, and they, he had a high chance of winning, and he was set up and assassinated in, in a crowded place in a country that's not known for violence. This just shows us the corruption that's in the world. Trump is part of this Corruption. People say that he's a savior. He's not a savior. He's part of the swamp of corruption, fraud, and destruction of the everyday person, of the working person. If we see Trump University that he founded, the students were taken for a ride. And it was never really an official university. We need un the untouchables. Men that cannot be corrupted. They were able to bring down Al Pone, But with a lot of difficulty. And the only thing they could prove was tax evasion. A tax charge. Because he had lawyers, accountants, people that helped him swindle and hide his money. We need this in, in every union, not just CWU, Transport Workers Union, or Transport Workers Union 100, AFL-CIO. We need this in every union. Like the United Auto Workers got new leadership that are asking for 40% raises just like the executives got. They want 40% raise over four years because that's what executives have received. Remember, the United Auto Workers was in trouble because the leaders were accused of corruption and were convicted of corruption of stealing members uh, dues and doing all types of fraud. Um, and now new leadership has come in and they did a show with Bernie Sanders live. And hopefully this leadership will stick to their guns and be able to fight for the workers. The United Auto Workers made major con made major concessions 
in the last contract because the company were claiming bankruptcy. But now they reported huge profits and gains that they were purposely hiding from the members. I love the fact that Teamsters was able to win a new contract. However, the part I don't agree with is that part-time workers should be paid less. Are they not working the same job? Are they not doing the same thing? So they should all get paid the same amount of money. In regardless of part-time or full-time. Because this can be exploited by the company to keep people part-time for the rest of their career. Or for as long as they have them. The cost of living is still the same. Many people cannot work full-time. I understand they have responsibilities at home or they're students. They're trying to better themselves. But they should be paid the same and they receive the same benefits even if they're part-time or full-time. The issue is that unions have been losing. They claim to be strong. They claim to be mighty. But we've been losing membership across the country in every industry. And no politician of any country, of any, sorry, of any party has been willing to stand up to the money interests. Even if they put a 1% tax across the board on all corporations, on all high earners, we'll be able to pay for Social Security. We'll be able to solve the hunger problem in the country. We'll be able to solve immigration, the criminal justice system, the youth, education, mental health. And no politician can say that they have solved or are willing to take on the special interests or the money interests. Trump, Biden, Pelosi, McConnell, McCarthy, Schumer, or any other politician out there has been scared to take on those that control the majority of the money and power in this country. And neither party dares to even take them on. The unions in Europe, they haven't lost their ability to strike. And they've been using their ability to strike to make sure that whenever necessary, they walk off the job. And my question is, why no one has challenged the New York State Taylor Law at all? They've talked about it, challenging it. But why no one has taken it to court, appealed it, or tried to fight it, a genuine fight against this law? This law is in violation of the Constitution. The New York State Constitution and the U.S. Constitution. Remember what George Washington said about kings. He did not want to be a king. And he refused to serve more than two terms. And he said a lot of precedent for all presidents to follow, including Donald Trump, that You shouldn't be in love with power, but be in love with serving the people. In the UK, writers get paid a lot more and keep rights to their work. And I support the LA workers that have walked off the job and stroke and had a strike for one day. But my question is, where is the public outrage? 
for all the workers, for the actors, for their favorite actors, for their favorite writers. Where is the public rage? If we all call, email, and write letters to the studio to show them how outraged we are because they don't want to share less than 1% of their profit with the art authors, writers, and actors, that's not right. And another thing is that I think that union should, election should be held digitally. And I support anyone that fights for digital elections that could be audited and there could be accountability. I'm always for democracy and all the beautiful things about it, such as accountability, checks and balances, due process, and being able to verify the decisions that are made. Remember, no one dare speak against the money interests or the special interests. The press walks around the issues and are owned by those same interests. And it's sad that those politicians that claim to be speaking the truth are hiding from the truth and are refusing to challenge those that have the money and those that have the power. If they could bring actors like Porter or Ice Cube, try to bankrupt them, therefore they could win, what would they do to us that are not famous? With this 1% tax, we'll be able to pay for housing, homelessness, social security, healthcare, transportation, education, tackle climate change, deal with the immigration situation, and allow us to fix the immigration system that's broken, that's trampling on people, actually make a system that's equitable and equal and also we could have clean air and water for our children's future and for our present and for our lives they have not been able to help rein in those in power They used to call them the robber barons, the fat cats of the past, came back again and exist again. They tried their hardest to get rid of them and get rid of the monopolies. But now the monopolies have increased to a great level. And we need an endless supply of uh, labor and unfortunately that labor is exploited. Non-union rights, non-union union work is being used across the country to pay people less and take away people's rights, including child labor. These are things that we're going backwards on instead of going forward on. Clarence Thomas the Supreme Court Justice had 38 luxury vacations paid for by those with money. And they refused to testify in court. Not in court, I'm, I mean in Congress, explaining and being held accountable for the violations of morals and refusing to adopt an ethics code that every other federal employee has to abide by. It, 
is it a coincidence that the middle class keeps shrinking? The countries with the most union are also considered some of the happiest countries in the world. They're the Nordic countries. Iceland is number one with the amount of unions. Two is Denmark. Three is Sweden. Four is Finland. And five is Norway. We need to increase the amount of unions we have in this country. But also, we need to increase the efficiency, the accountability, the democracy within our unions. And point out the weaknesses within them. Remember, this is not a sprint. This is a marathon. This is a marathon for our rights. This is our marathon to make sure we let the unions know that the workers need to be protected and that they need to be stronger. And what they consider to be strong is not strong enough. We need to expand unions across the country and also make sure that they're running efficiently and accountable to the members, to the workers. Run by the workers just like they were made for the workers. And I tell people this new contract that the MTA signed with TWU 100 is a test of what they can get away with. That this job has forever changed. All these people are retiring and they're not coming back. And the new members are coming in hungrier and fighting for their survival and not understanding that this is a union shop. And we need to fight not with each other, but fight for our rights make this a safer job and make sure that all our members are protected. Not just those that are in the club or those that are connected, but every member is protected. That we all receive workers' comp whenever we get injured, not because they shouldn't investigate. I'm saying we fought for those rights and they're turning them back and giving them back. We should be stronger, not weaker. We should be more united, not more splintered. We shouldn't attack each other. We should work together to make this a stronger union. I'm not anti-union. I'm pro-union. But I think that we need to do something and move away just from the democratic politics. But create a movement, a workers' movement, that the workers' interests are put first, not the corporation, not the companies, not the individuals that are making, getting rich off of our labor, but with our labor and our love and compassion for each other, we should make this world a better place. Have a good day. And I have you all in my mind and in my thoughts. And I hope you also have me in your thoughts and in your prayers. Have a good day.